Hello, uh, my name is uh, Douglas McClymont. I'm a volunteer here at the Avro Heritage Museum, uh, where today we're going to talk about one of our latest acquisitions. We have a, a pair of WE177s that have been generously donated to the museum by the REF Museum from uh, Stafford. The WE177 is a, a UK designed and built, uh, built at the uh, Armament Weapons Research Establishment down at Aldermaston. They designed and built the, uh, the bombs. Uh, the bombs came into her service in 1966 uh, and the first delivery of the, uh, the weapons was to a Vulcan squadron at RAF uh, Connesmore. The WE-177 was built in three different variants, the 177A, 177B and the 177C. Uh, and the biggest difference between them all was essentially the warhead that was inside the bomb. Uh, from an outside uh, look, they were very similar. The A was smaller, it was about 600 pounds, 650 pounds. The B and C were uh, quite a bit larger. They were 950 pounds and they were longer. But other than that, all three variants would have looked very much the, uh, the same outwardly. Although you would think the A was the first one into service, the B was the first one into service. The A came a little bit later. But essentially, the B was a strategic and tactical uh, nuclear weapon that was designed for the, uh, the V-Force. It came into service to cover the gap that was going on in between uh, Skybolt being cancelled, Blue Steel being extended in service, Polaris coming into uh, service. They had to find a way of uh, providing the, the Vulcans uh, with a, uh, a nuclear weapon that could be delivered in a number of ways. So they set to designing these. You can see they very much have a, a, a conventional bomb look. Uh, they were designed to be dropped from altitude, falling to the ground as a, uh, a free-fall bomb. It could be dropped at low level from a Vulcan. Uh, and it could also be lofted, so the idea was that you could fly in at low level, pull up and throw the bomb a distance, and it had a, uh, a radar altimeter in the nose, which would allow it to have a, an airburst uh, feature. The B version, which was the uh, first one into service, it had a, uh, a yield of 450 to 490 kilotons and if you're not aware of what a kiloton is uh, one kiloton represents essentially the same blast as a thousand tons of TNT so uh, if you've got 450 kilotons that's the equivalent of 450,000 tons of TNT going off and to put it in perspective the first bomb dropped at uh, Hiroshima in the Second World War, it had a yield of 15 kilotons. 15 kilotons versus 450, so this is quite a bit bigger. And it, if you've seen films, you can see that size is something that's changed quite dramatically in the time. Uh, a later version, the C version, it had a smaller warhead, so it was down about 200 kilotons. And the A version, which you might have thought would be the first one to be built, but it was, it was slightly uh, behind the B. The A was used primarily by the Navy, and it had a much smaller uh, warhead. It could either use, it could be set to go off with half a ton, a kiloton, half a kiloton, or 10 kilotons, depending on whether it was being used as a depth charge in deep or shallow water. So the uh, 177 came into service, as I said, back in 1966. It remained in service all the way through with a number of aircraft. The Navy used them on sea vixens, buccaneers, harriers, 
within the Air Force, initially the Vulcan, uh, and all the Vulcan squadrons would have been capable of uh, flying with, uh, with these at the, uh, at the later stages. It was intended to be put on TSR-2. It then served a Buccaneer, this time with the RAF, the Jaguar, and latterly the uh, Tornado. The last of the uh, bombs went out of service in 1998, uh, which made it the longest serving nuclear weapon that had, uh, that had been in the UK armory. It was the, uh, the longest serving tactical nuclear weapon and of course it was the uh, the last atomic bomb that we had in the RAF. The Navy continued to uh, to keep uh, nuclear weapons with their their Navy uh, and their submarines. Looking at the bomb, uh, this is a drill round you'd be pleased to know. That the, uh, the government have kept a pretty good grip uh, on the, uh, the destruction of the, uh, the real ones, but these were drill rounds. So these were used to train loading, procedures, handling on the aircraft. Uh, I personally never flew with one on an aeroplane. I'm sure they were flown, but uh, they weren't routinely flown. These were loaded on and off. But they looked identical to the, uh, to the real weapon. You wouldn't be able to tell uh, them apart unless you got right up close and you knew a few things about them. So I'm going to talk just briefly about the, uh, the bomb. As I said, this is a C version, so this is the bigger one. So this would be, this would be known as bomb aircraft, 950 pounds, medium capacity. Uh, and the reason it was given that title was so that you never confused it with a, uh, a thousand pound conventional explosive bomb. Generally, known as uh, a 177. You wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't have been remembering the full, uh, the full title. So as I said, it weighs 950 pounds. It's about 3.3 meters, 133 inches. The A version is just a little bit shorter and a little bit lighter. A, a distinguishing feature between the, uh, the A's and the B's and C's is this external uh, conduit. This was added to allow some kind of wiring to go from front to back or back to front. So starting at the front, uh, this is the, uh, the nose cone. Behind here is a radar altimeter. So from that, the aircraft bomb would be able to work out what altitude it's at as it heads down towards the ground. And that would, be, uh, that would trigger for an Airbus airburst if uh, required. Part of the safety mechanisms that the bomb had is it needed to know it was in the air and flying. So this little triangle here would give away uh, a warn you that potentially uh, a little uh, rod would eject out of here which would have a, a pitot probe on it. So this is how it knew it was actually in the air and flying and had been released from the aircraft. The white cross here tells you it's a drill round because it's telling you there isn't a danger from this warning sign. I don't know a great deal about what was on inside, uh, not many of us did, but somewhere in here uh, would have been the, uh, the nuclear charge, there would have been electronics, there would have been ballast, because as I said they're all different weights, but you would want all of them to fly exactly the same way once you've released it from an aircraft, so ballistically they were all exactly the same centre of gravity and they all had uh, exactly the, the same weight so that we knew where the bomb was going. Another uh, ejector warning. Up here we've got the uh, canister. In this canister there is the uh, harness, as we called it. The harness was a length of wire which had several plugs on it. And these are all the connectors that connect to the bomb. So in here is where you would plug all these wires to and those wires would have fed up and connected into the, uh, to the aircraft. 
At the front of the bomb, these two sections here, these are the lugs. These are where the heavy mechanical gripping of the aircraft mechanism would be fitted to. So once the armourer has brought the, air, the bomb to the aircraft, he would load it up, connect these guys, put the harness on and connect that to the aircraft. And once he'd done that, that was essentially the aircraft loaded and then he would do a couple of tests using a test uh, meter down here. This container is then taken off and of course discarded. So this would never flew with the, 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 the bomb or the, uh, the aircraft. Another ejector unit, and right at the back here, this hatch at the back, this is where the parachute would be that would retard the bomb. It was never intended to dangle on the parachute. It was simply to slow it down if you were dropping the bomb from low level. So as a crew member, I would come out to the aeroplane and see the bomb loaded, all the wires connected, and uh, down here we've got a little panel, and uh, this panel we would open, so we'd have a key for that, and depending on the mission and what was expected of the weapon, we'd set several codes in this little panel here, and at the very end, a simple key, not too dissimilar to the kind of key you have in your croup lock. A key like that, in here, turn, and that's it. The bomb is armed and ready to go, and uh, once it's released from the aircraft, it would, uh, it would function exactly as intended. So that's really all I know about the uh, WE-177. Retired in 98. Uh, before 98, I would never have even acknowledged the existence of these. Uh, my wife didn't know, we spoke to nobody. But uh, now you'll see these openly displayed at a number of museums. I think because uh, we've put it all behind us, but uh, just this week the RAF have ordered 12 new nuclear bombers uh, and I suspect they're going to be not too dissimilar to the WE-177, albeit uh, of an American design. Thank you for your time.